Well, more on today's market action. More generally now joining us from San Francisco, Michael Grant, co-CIO and senior court portfolio manager at Calamos Investments. He looks at global long short, U.S. growth strategies too. So Michael, is there a divergence here between bond market reaction and equity market reaction? Well, yes, there has been so far um, in 2019 in the sense that uh, equities have rebounded, um, but you haven't really seen a revival in risk assets. So on the surface, the equity market seemed to be signaling um, a recovery of profit growth, uh, probably beginning in the current quarter and then extending into 2020. Um, but in contrast, the credit market seemed to be saying that we're going to witness further economic slowdown, at least through the second half of this year. So I think there is a divergence. Um, and our view is that until we see more confirmation from the credit markets than we should assume, i.e. confirmation of a risk revival, then we should assume economic slowdown through the second half of 2019. Is there conviction in the sell-off we're seeing now in the equity markets? I mean, granted, you say that perhaps there might be a, a rollover here in views and that perhaps the equity markets might be looking towards what the bond markets have been looking at, but it doesn't feel like there's much conviction. It doesn't feel like there's huge breath. No, I would disagree with that. Um, we, we've seen this V-shaped recovery in equity assets uh, that will probably meet an L-shaped recovery in the economy and in, er and in earnings. And if you look at the underlying uh, style bias and sector bias of the U.S. equity market, it's actually consistent with that theme. You're not seeing the high beta, um, the more cyclical or global sectors outperform. You're seeing leadership in quality growth, which is again consistent with this idea that through the second half of this year, growth will be harder to come by. So Michael, where are you looking to add, I mean, clearly long, short and U.S. growth are your primary strategies. Where are you seeing opportunities there? Well, at the moment, I think the more important um, focus is on capital preservation. Um, I think the key, the key for us is focusing on the U.S and the domestic consumer, which is probably going to be a source of refuge over the next six months. The vulnerabilities obviously uh, are global, uh, in global trade, global manufacturing, global commodities, and it's consistent with what we see as the broad pattern of the current trade noise. And that pattern is the reversal of global supply chains and the attempt by uh, the U.S. administration to replace those global supply chains with more regional economic blocks. Well, what does that do? First of all, is that advisable? Is it attainable? And what would it do to a portfolio? Well, um, obviously, there's an economic component and there's a political component. I'll just focus on, on um, the economic aspects. I think here in the United States, there's pluses and minuses of what the administration is trying to do. Um, very broadly, it's trying to address the social discontent and political fragmentation that appears to be a consequence of two decades of globalization. So to the extent that this attempt to bring manufacturing and employment back to the United States works, and I think you have to see that as a plus. Uh, the first order impacts of trade, in our view, will not be that noticeable for the U.S. economy. There are some estimates that it might impact GDP growth by half a percent. We think that probably overestimates the impact. But the big question is the second order effects. Uh, and we would argue that the second order effects will be more apparent in the emerging economies, in particularly China. So if there's an unusual or disruptive slowdown in China, then I think that feedback into uh, the U.S. economy is the one to, to keep your eye on. And there's a lot of evidence, obviously, that um, China's economic trajectory is under pressure. Most of the leading indicators for the property market there, for example, are mm -hmm. declining. You're continuing to see the rise in, in non-performing loans and, and so forth. Michael, one of your 
uh, pieces of your remit is to look at potential shorts. Are you seeing any opportunities on the short side of things in a market where we just keep grinding higher, even if we've seen some down days the last week or so? Sure. So, um, as I mentioned, we have a broad bias towards the U.S. consumer and the opposite on the short side. So, for example, anything associated with global trade is a candidate uh, on the short side. And, of course, the semiconductor sector fits very well um, into that theme. More broadly, tech is under pressure today, and consumer or investors have assumed um, that the leadership of technology is largely safe or non-cyclical growth. And I think that that theme is going to be tested in the next few quarters uh, if we do see the U.S. economy continue to slow. So top growth picks, if you can give them to us, Michael, even areas, if that suits you better. Well, we're going to continue to focus on uh, quality growth. I mean, there are some very well-known names in the technology space um, that meet that criteria. I think anything here in the United States exposed to the consumer, um, even the housing market, is still fine. All right. Thank you for your uh, contribution today. Michael Grant, Calamos Advisor, is much appreciated.